But God spoke to me the other day, and he said, the hardest time, what is the hardest time for saints to have confidence? And I said, Lord, I don't, I don't know. And he said, when things don't go well. Amen. I was like, oh, you know, it was kind of simple. So we're going to talk about tonight confidence. I'm not beating up my iPad, trust me. Confidence in the bad times. Amen. 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 God said that when things are going the way we want them to go, mm -hmm. I find with saints, it's, you know, it's quite easy to serve God outside the test. Amen. But when it but when the test comes, it's when saints fall by the wayside. Amen. And so he said to me, oh, and the test is the waiting time. Uh -huh. The testing time. Mm -hmm. Can you wait on God, obey God, which is his word, obey his word, even when it's not a praise time? Amen. And if you haven't, young people, well, young people should know this too. But if they have, if you don't, just keep living. Amen. Just keep living. Right. There will be times in your life God makes promises, and we get real excited about the promise. Amen. But Amen. after the promise or the call, let's say God, God, we know God has called people in this ministry, and I've told them, I said, I'm happy for you, but I'm sad for you. Because God called you, but your calling is going to cost you. Amen. And if you are chosen, it's going to cost you even more. Amen. So what I'm telling them, which I don't really think they understand, but even for a saint, a saint is a called out one. <clears throat> a chosen is someone that's pulled beyond that. The pastor, the evangelist. Um, the teacher, the preacher, those those callings that are in the Bible. Those people that are called to do that are, cho are chosen. Amen. The, body says, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Everybody's not chosen. Amen. Uh, everybody's not chosen to lead. Now, some people are chosen to lead, and they refuse it. And God doesn't make you do that. If, if you, that's, if that's the price they will pay. You can tell God no. And you need to know that. You can tell God no. I didn't say your life would be wonderful, but you can tell God no. God is not going to make anyone do anything. So if you tell God, and he goes by fruit, amen? If you tell God by your fruit, no, God accepts it. And the enemy accepts it. And of course, there are certain doors and windows in your life that then are wide open to the enemy because you turned your back on the will of God. Amen. 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 So many are called. Everybody that gets saved is a called person, but few are chosen. When you are called by God, you get saved. You get hopefully filled with the Holy Spirit at some point. When that happens, you now will go through times of mountaintop experience and valleys. Mountaintop and valleys. The real test of a believer, someone who has confidence in God, is the valley time, not the mountain time. What's the mountain time? The mountain time is when you get a check. The mountain time is when um, it's a check you didn't expect. Money come. Um, you got a check for $10,000. We've been waiting on a couple of very, 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 very wealthy people who have done all the paperwork for us to give very, 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 very large amounts of money to the school. And they hadn't done it as of yet. But every time this subject came up, I would say, or Sister Michelle would say to me, 
She says, go ahead and pass the room, worry about it. Amen. God's going to do it. Uh, one of them, Mr. Mosley, Mr. Mosley has about five CPAs, but one of his CPAs, he called me and he said, well, have you heard from da da da? I said, no, I haven't heard from him. I said, but Mr. Mosley, I'm not worried about it because he said he was going to do it. He'll do it. And he said, hmm, well, that's good, Ms. Bias. That's good, Ms. Bias. That's how we talk. He said, but I'm going to connect with him. I said, well, you can do that if you want to, but I'm just going to wait. He said, well, you know I'm going to do so and so and so. And I said, yeah. I said, I'm not worried about it. Mr. Mosley, you said you would, would match it. Be doing it. And then <coughs> um, Brother Dave has a very wealthy friend, a lot of friends, who have <coughs> a family foundation. And he, she wants to get with us because she wants to give a large amount of money. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, things started happening that we haven't been able to get together yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I talked to Dave today, and he said, well, I'm trying to catch up with her, and she homeschools her kids, and we're trying to figure out how we can get her down there because she wants to write you guys a big check. And then, uh, was it West Vaco? It's not a verbal promise or a large sum of money. <clears throat> but while you're waiting, is what God and the devil are looking at. Amen. Because your waiting time, you're, that's the test. Would you agree or disagree? Amen. For Amen. us, it's the waiting time that's the test. Amen. If you are not totally grounded, in confidence in God that what God says he's going to do, he will do, then you're going to fall apart during the waiting time and you're going to back, go back to the world in how you handle things. Amen. See, because we really, if you be honest, our natural state of mind is totally opposite to the work. Mine is. And so it makes more sense to us, especially in press times, to do it our way. Amen. Amen. And we are able to say to ourselves, well, I'm not doing nothing bad. I'm just doing da 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 Because I got to do da 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 And I don't see nothing wrong with it. And it doesn't matter how many scriptures come up. You could be watching TV. Because God has done this to me. And a commercial come on, and a commercial really is speaking that scripture. Uh -huh. As God's trying to reach you in all these different kind of ways. You might go to the bank, this happened to me years ago, and put your money up to shoot. The money came back to the car, and in the envelope was the scripture. It was the same exact scripture that God had been trying to deal with me on. And this is about 15, 20 years ago. And it kind of spooked me. Because I'm like, whoa. You know, the scripture is showing up in everything. Well, that's God. Because God is desperate to get us. He is literally, if God is desperate for anything, it's to get us to obey. Amen. Remember last week we talked about I surrender all. He, he God, that song, um, that y'all used to dance to. What was it? He wants it all. He wants it all. We have a very, 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 very difficult time with giving all Amen. to God. We will give part, but we're not going to give all. Because we really don't see the relevance to giving all of our life to God. And we talk ourselves out of it, especially in the text. Let's go. This has become one of my favorite scriptures. Go to Proverbs 25, 28. The testing time is the time. That's the time when we see whether we are really confident that God's going to take care of us, that God's our provider. I love this scripture. And 
it ministers even to me. Let's read. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Let's read it again. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. When you can't tell you no to things that you know are against the word of God, you don't have any rule over your spirit. That's the spirit of the devil. You're, you're listening to flesh. You're listening to this is how I feel, so this is how I'm at. This is, how, this is what I want, so this is what I'm going to do. We, uh, I don't know if you, but I remember years and years ago, I said to God, I don't see nothing wrong with you. Uh -huh. And God said to me, that's good, but you ain't supposed to see, I see. Amen. Amen. And then he just, I don't know if he's ever done this to you, but he just shut down on me. Amen. You know, God will do that to me. He'll, he'll listen for a while, he'll talk back for a while, and then I know he's gone. It's like, I'm not going to argue, I tell Carlisa has a debating spirit. You know those 20s. You, you think you know everything. And you're going to push it and push it and push it. They push the envelope. Teenagers do it. 20-year-olds do it. It's not until you're about 30, 35. Hopefully, some people live all their life, don't wake up. But about 30, 35, you begin to look at your life and go, what the heck have I been doing? Amen. That's why it's crazy that in America, especially in this economy, they say about 35 you should be married, have two kids, fenced in the yard, own your home, own two cars and a dog and a cat. It's all a fantasy. Mm -hmm. It's all a fantasy. And people will go into deep depression because they haven't accomplished what they say they're supposed to accomplish because mm -hmm. they haven't checked in with God. I was asking someone Sunday, I said, um, did you talk to God about that? And he went, talk to God about it? I said, did you ask God, did you do that? Mm -hmm. And they literally frowned at me. Mm -hmm. um, um, no. I said, well, what if God says don't do it? Well, I'll just pray he protect me when I'm doing it. No. I said, whoa, we got a long way to go. Because when we make up this, that we're going to do it, hell could free us over. We'll slide and burn our butt, cut our butt up on the ice to go where we want to go. Amen. When we have no rule over our spirit. Uh -huh. See, we all get out of sorts. Just like what I did with Dante and I did with Edward. I was really speaking to spirits. I wasn't speaking to their mind. I was speaking to their spirit. And I wanted them to take a rule over it and get control over their spirit. Because we all get out of sorts. Amen. Yeah. 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 But we're supposed to catch ourselves. Right. Yeah. And, and as I've taught, talk to ourselves and say, look, I'll give you another example. At 6.35 this evening, I was making sure my family had dinner. Oh, in the yeah. back. And Carlisa walked in at 6.00. No, at 6.25, because I kept looking at the clock, she walked in and she said, is the food ready, Mom? I'm hungry. It's 6.25, and I have to be out here at 7. She wanted to know what's dinner ready. So I want to eat. I said, well, go ask your phone. <clears throat> so she went and asked the phone. At 6.35, she got a plate of food that was supposed to be for her father. Well, then he came in at 6.38. He wanted to play. 6.38. Now, what time am I supposed to be out here? I haven't even changed clothes. I haven't even changed clothes. I'm still in my work clothes. And I've got my iPad up. I had started just reviewing my notes. You know, making sure I still have my ducks in a row for tonight. Now. You tell me, what is going on inside of me? Aggravation. What's my else? Frustration. Irritation, frustration. 
They're totally oblivious. Mm -hmm. So then I had no plate because Carlisa had taken the plate, was supposed to be for Bishop. So I just get up from my desk and go wash the plate. Mm -hmm. And I give him a plate. He's mumbling some. Y'all may not know this, but even on the soundboard, Bishop has a lot of bass in his voice. And it's better. He likes to talk to himself. When he preaches, it's no more to talk to yourself and answer yourself. It's because he does it all day, every day. Yeah. You know. And so he was mumbling. I said, what are you mumbling about? Because I, mumbling? I was correct, excuse me. Because I was correcting Carissa about stop being so disfocused, pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. No, I was singing a song. I said, so what song were you singing? I don't know. I was humming something. I was singing a song I had heard. It's now 6.45. Neither one of them. Is this relating to anybody? It's this, this life, this reality. Neither one of them have said, it's a quarter seven. Ma, honey's not dressed. Did she have a mic on? Remember last week I came out here with no mic on. Okay? So I'm getting more. So when I said something to Bishop about mumbling, he turned around and said to me, what's wrong with you? You all right? Right there. What was supposed to happen? Yelling. Yelling. Uh-huh. Huh? And talking back. Yeah. Yelling, talking back. What else? What was supposed to happen? Come on. Confrontation. Confrontation. Y'all awful nice tonight. Because we should be arguing right now. But because I have rule over my spirit, I just sat there. I knew if I even got up out the chair, it was going to be on up in here. So, I just sat there and I thought on a scripture. I really did. A soft answer. Turn it away and wrap it. You're going to have time. Now, with everything else that's going on in, in my life, I lead a very, 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 very busy life. And I love it. I mean, there are some people younger than me, crippled up somewhere, dead, you know, body in motion stays in motion. Amen. And I enjoy what I do, but there are days when it really, really gets crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have church bills to pay today, school bills to pay today. <coughs> We're going on NBC News, invited us, called us and invited us to advertise on them online, on their Facebook. Not their Facebook, their website. Thank you. And so, Myself, Tigner, and my, my account manager at NBC 12 Grant. We have been going, since the show will tell you, but Tigner will tell you, it's been a month of heck going back and forth. Grant doesn't look at all his emails. He, it's, it's a wonderful experience dealing with people that you think are supposed to be professional. But in any business now, you find people don't have a spirit of excellence. Amen. So we've been going back and forth. I tell him what pictures I want because what we're going to have is a little square with a uh, thing about the school. You click on a roll over that square and a video montage comes up, which we had to pick a guy who would be our voice. We had to pick what pictures we want. In the meantime, phone is ringing, Pastor, da 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 da. I got emailing, I need to answer back. Um, I'm head of the Scholarship Foundation, so I'm getting emails because General Assembly is coming up in January. Meanwhile, Cheryl has just signed me, and somebody's on the intercom saying, Pastor, so and so and so is on the phone for you. That's all day long. Okay, and then I have to transcend because my family has to eat. So I cook dinner. I either cook it in my office or cook it in the kitchen, but I make sure and staff fusses because Christian Cheryl, she said, Oh my god, I'm hungry just smelling that food. Because I want to make sure they have dinner. 
then after dinner on Thursday night, I have to get ready for church. So tonight should have been one of the nights. And that now, when you're in, uh, your spirit is offline, you're under attack, I know that all of this is going on because I'm getting ready to teach. Amen. I also know that I'm going to say something. It may be one word, but I'm going to say something that somebody's going to go, whoa, wow. Things that make you go, hmm. And that's going to go home with them. And it's going to be the seed that God is going to grow to make changes in them. Yeah. A lot of scripture Brother Davis gave, the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. God is looking for us to keep growing up. Amen. Not keep doing the same thing over and over and over. So I could have went off tonight because both of them were selfish. They wanted to eat. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. They did not even pay attention to the time. I had every right in the natural to go totally off the chain. But you have to choose whether you're going to rule over you or you're going to be like a broken down city without walls. Now that scripture is very significant because in the olden days, every city was like a fort. They have, remember, Joshua brought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling. All every city had walls. Because if they came under attack, they had soldiers, police, Amen. that would get up on the walls and shoot arrows and throw rocks to defend the city. Amen. So that is a very deep scripture. If you can't rule over your, your life, then, then your walls, your city, your life mm -hmm. is under threat of destruction. Amen. So the devil, when you're pressed, like the example I gave you. When you're pressed like that, he is looking to see whether you have rule over you. Amen. Because he knows if you're not in the word, I mean in it. Remember we talked about jumping in the pool versus putting your feet in the pool. He knows if you're not in the word, when those situations come up, you're going to be a broken down city. Amen. Now, everybody goes through these times. Amen. I'm not asking for a pity party. This is just life. Amen. Okay? But when life happens, are you using the word or are you using the world? Amen. And how you used to handle things. So if I had, and that would have been fine. We could have argued, or I could have went off the chart, because my mom was saying, look, ain't nobody caring about what they care about. They want to eat. You got to get ready. You now got 15 minutes. Get dressed. Fix your hair back up. Do your makeup. You got your word. Where's your iPad? Where's your extension cord? Come on. You got to do, you know. And, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, and when you're feeling like that, that's when you're going to go off. Amen. Amen. The instant you go off, you told the devil, I've not been in the word enough. Amen. And when you show him by your fruit, I've not been in the word enough, here he comes. Amen. Amen. So you've made life harder for yourself because you've shown the devil, I don't have rule over me. Amen. See, and rule over you. Don't think, can I be real? Amen. Don't think I wasn't pissed. Right. Okay? Please don't. Please don't think I'm so, as a Catholic church would call it, saint. No, I'm not Mother Teresa. All right. Okay? I'm Lois Bodies. Okay? I'm human. Amen. Don't think I wasn't aggravated. Don't think I wasn't pissed off. Okay? Because you'd be wrong. But either I'm going to obey this, or I'm going to obey this. Amen. And that's what God and the devil are watching. Amen. In the valley, in the press times, in the time where you just feel like there's not enough hours in a day. In the time where you're doing things for God, but you really don't want to do them. Amen. And there will be those times. Amen. Where you are doing what you know is right before God, 
But God knows I really don't want to do this. Uh -huh. How are you going to act? Right. Do you because see doing it, but you don't have rule over you, uh -huh. so you're doing it with an attitude. Uh -huh. You might as well have went on and did what the heck you wanted to do. Uh -huh. He's watching. Amen. And the devil is watching. He and God asked him where you come from. Going to and fro in the earth, mm -hmm. seeking. That's yep. the key. He's yep. watching. Uh -huh. yeah. how, are they, how are you acting? Remember, he can't hear your thoughts. Only God can hear your thoughts. Yeah. Uh -huh. But the devil watches. Yeah. He watches for opportunity to hurt you. Yeah. And you open the door to that hurt. If you don't have rule over you. Amen. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want to do it. Yes, I'm even justified. Yeah. But the word says. Amen. The word says. I knew I had to come out here and teach. I knew I was getting more and more aggravated. So finally, at the last thing that happened, I said to both of them, uh, y'all need to respect the fact that I gotta go out of here and teach these people in a few minutes. And Bishop said, oh, right, I'm sorry. And he walked out. It was two minutes to seven. It was a whole lot, I'm trying to use it to teach you because see, your mind will tell you it's not possible right. at that time. Uh -huh. And it's not, if you have not come to church and gotten the word. Amen. This is why we come. Amen. To grow. The scripture of Brother David said. Right. Get the word so we can grow up. Amen. Grow past this. Amen. This is a powerful thing. Amen. The mind is super powerful. The mind never stops working. Amen. When you're asleep, the mind is working. Amen. Bishop told me this morning on the way to work, he said, were you all right last time you see us, huh? Um, I said, I know my shoulder was hurting me a little bit because wintertime, my uh, shoulder blade was broke by, fractured by my ex. And so when it gets cold, if cold air gets in here, it's going to ache. I don't mind about it. It's life. Uh -huh. Get over it. Move on. Put uh -huh. some heat on it. Move on. And so he said, last night in your sleep, you had your arm up in the air and you were doing like this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I know when I'm woke, sometimes I'll do that. To, uh, it relieves some of the pain in my joints. So I was probably in pain and my brain, y'all don't hear me, mm -hmm. spoke to my body and, and it did that. Mm -hmm. The brain is working. I'm trying to, the point, I don't remember it. Uh -huh. I do remember right before I went to sleep, my joint was aching a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh well, that's right. It's a perfect example of the price. Because God told me not to marry him. Mm -hmm. But I wanted it. So I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, got just what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Got just what I didn't want. Mm -hmm. And so I paid a price. There is a price mm -hmm. that has to be paid when we disobey the word yeah. of God. Amen. 